Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rukade, for uh, this opportunity once again. And I welcome you all to this telecast from the pink city of Jaipur. I remember and I am so grateful to Dr. Rukade for involving me in his academic programs, which are very popular to spread academics all over, particularly in the Western world. I have some fond memories of the previous telecast, wherein we had a lot of interaction um, uh, during live surgical session. So once again, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and involving me here. Today, uh, we have lined up a variety of endoscopic cases. We will, of course, begin with a young child having JNA, extensive JNA with all possible extensions, and we'll go endoscopic with um, discussion on indications and all those things. Then we have some endoscopic interesting cases like adenoidectomy with cobulator and microdebrider. We have some primary sinus surgery. We have some focus on frontal sinus surgery. Then we have cases of revision sinus surgery and then interesting CSF rhinorrhea with Meningo and Cephalosil. So probably we'll go till 3 p.m. India time or maybe beyond depending upon the, you know, what uh, Dr. Rokade directs me. So today I am all over to him for his, um, you know, this academic event. And thank you once again. And can we go ahead with the CT pictures or the imaging? Yeah, please do. So, Rukade, Dr. Rukade, I would love to be interrupted again and again for any questions from the audience to make it more and more interactive. Sure. Believe me, this is a, again a good learning opportunity for me as well with this interaction. So, I welcome Dr. Lewis for this um, uh, wonderful day for the interaction and I, I, I'm very sure that will be definitely everybody will be benefited with this kind of interaction. So, this first case as I discuss, as I told you, is a young child, is a 12 year old child with a nasal blockage on endoscope is a mass in the nasal cavity and nasal pharynx and then you know in a 12 year old child with such kind of a mass lesion with history of you know uh, repeated bleeding is always uh, something which goes in favor of JNA until proved otherwise. Now JNA being a vascular tumor, it has a propensity to bleed, we all know. So we never, you know, advise biopsy for such lesions to prevent hemorrhage. So our diagnosis is further established by imaging. Now there are lots of controversies regarding what kind of imaging to be ordered. So here we have an imaging protocol with discussion on pros and cons of kinds of imaging. So the first imaging what I am showing is a non-contrast CT scan. Are you getting CT on the picture uh, on the screen? Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yeah, so this is a non-contrast CT scan. See this in the dichrome format. If I show the coronal one, what you get on this non-contrast CT scan is a mass lesion in the nasal cavity going. See this broadening the broadening the sphenopalatine foramen going out, but you cannot differentiate what kind of lesion it could be. There are variety of nasal masses from benign to malignant and number of nasal masses could be <coughs> and a non-contrast CT scan cannot actually differentiate between you know uh, what kind of a mass lesion it is. So we need a contrast CT scan then. So then let me show you a contrast CT scan. Contrast will give you enhancement and rather than a plain contrast CT scan we advise this CT angiogram which is actually a contrast CT scan with a dedicated angiographic pictures to show you more to give you more information than a contrast CT scan. So our primary investigation to order when we suspect JNA is a CT angiogram. This gives you enhancement and more information. Let me show you in all three planes what the CT angiogram shows. So in this picture, if you look at the coronal picture, see this, this is the coronal one. If you look at this, see what kind of information it is giving you. This is a enhancing mass lesion which looks like centered at the level of sphenopalatine foramen and going either side it is you know spreading circumferentially it is going medially into the nasal cavity and if you go behind in the nasopharynx then it has eroded the pterygoid process then it has eroded the sphenoid floor and you know bulging in the sphenoid 
इट इज प्रोलेप्स आउटसाइड थ्रू दिस फेनो पैलेटाइन फोरम एंड टेरिगो मैगजरी फिशर इन टू द इन्फ्रा टेम्परल फोसा सी इट इज गोइंग इन द इन्फ्रा टेम्परल फोसा बोथ इन्फीरियरली एंड सुपीरियरली द मोस्ट सुपीरियर पार्ट ऑफ द इन्फ्रा टेम्परल फोसा इज इन्वॉल्व देन इट इज गोइंग अप सी दिस इज द ग्रेटर विंग ऑफ द स्वीनॉइड दिस इज द ग्रेटर विंग ऑफ द स्वीनॉइड ऑन अदर साइड एंड वॉट इट इज शोइंग इट इज इरोडिंग द ग्रेटर विंग ऑफ द स्वीनॉइड एंड राइजिंग अप इन द टेम्परल लोब ऑफ द ब्रेन दो बींग एक्सटेड्यूरल see this and if i show you the sagittal one you will see better that how it is rising up and going behind and beyond see this this is the mass lesion this is going see this is the orbit this is entering into the inferior orbital fissure can you see very clear yes going behind through the superior orbital fissure and then going behind in the in the cavernous sinus in the temporal lobe of the brain it is rising lateral to the cavernous sinus into the temporal lobe of the brain now let me show you on the axial so all three planes gives all valuable information see this this is the mass lesion can you see very clear now yes on the axial ct a contrast ct scan gives you all classical extensions of jna and because of these peculiar extensions the jna is diagnosed on the basis of radiology rather than on biopsy because it has some preferential extensions preferential extension means preferentially it goes in the nasopharynx and the nasal cavity preferentially it goes laterally see this is anterior lateral extensions can you see yes and this is this is by means of eroding the pterygoid it is going posterior laterally as well see both separate extensions classical then see when you go up it is going in the inferior orbital fissure from where it is going behind and behind see this is the foramen lacerum carotid artery and this is through the superior orbital fissure it has gone towards the cavernous sinus it is bulging towards the temporal lobe of the brain so this is classical extension the important thing to be noted here is jna never invades the paranasal sinuses of course it bulges in the paranasal sinuses but it never involve the mucosa never invade the mucosa of the paranasal sinuses it never invades the cavernous sinus through the paranasal sinuses we have a general feeling that after involving the sphenoid sinus it can involve the cavernous sinus it never goes like that see the sphenoid sinus is separate can you see the bone separate bone of the cavernous sphenoid sinus all around and this is coming from the inferior orbital fissure superior orbital fissure superior orbital fissure is actually an extension of the cavernous sinus anteriorly so it has gone from the superior orbital fissure into the cavernous sinus bulging in the cavernous sinus and see the carotid artery behind so it goes circumferentially and see this is the bony wall all around the carotid artery can you see here see th this is the horizontal petrous carotid this is the foramen lacerum carotid there is the bony wall then this is the cavernous carotid now there is no bony wall and this this lesion is particularly you know going towards the cavernous and it can compress the carotid artery but most of the time it doesn't actually invade doesn't actually invade and it progresses towards the cavernous sinus and towards the uh, you know superior orbital fissure cavernous sinus and this temporal lobe of the brain it is pushing but not invading the dura so by means of all these extension you can have a fairly good diagnosis of jna now this being a vascular tumor you need more information about it that's why we order rather than a contrast ct scan we order a ct angiogram to give you more information about vascularity see when it comes to you know management of jna the first and the most important thing which frightens surgeon is the bleeding vascularity is the major concern and this ct angiogram gives you most valuable information about the vascularity and what i believe what i always propagate we surgeons must know how to read out this ct angiogram to know how the vessels are related to the tumor see i need information how the, we all know the internal maxillary is the principal vessel primary principal vessel we should know how the mag internal maxillary is entering into the tumor so that we can catch it at the right place 
how the other vessels are invading into the tumor and supplying because all this are important for the decision making if i have a why why this jna is approached endoscopically most often because the internal maxillary comes anterior to the tumor you can catch the internal maxillary prior to the tumor removal so you can devascularize the tumor and that is the biggest reason for the endoscopic you know your ability to excise it endoscopically before because you take the vascular control before and then remove the tumor now what happens if the vessel comes from behind if you have extensive vascularity coming from behind the tumor to me is a strongest contraindication for a simple endoscopic approach either you embolize those vessels primarily to devascularize it or go by open approach because otherwise simply by without embolization you cannot you know uh, enter into the tumor which is too vascular without taking the vessels in control so let me show you how to read out the ct angiogram quickly and what is happening in this particular patient see this i will show you from below see i am starting from the neck can you see this um, carotid artery in the neck yes sir very clearly very clearly see now the carotid artery jugular vein now the carotid carotid artery jugular vein now i am going up 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 see this i am going up and now the carotid is being divided into two can you see yes yeah let me show you better picture see how the carotid being divided into two let me show you a better picture see now follow my cursor this is the common carotid artery can you see this is the common carotid artery on the right side yes sir now i am going up going up going up and this is being divided into two vessels is that clear yes sir and need, now see there are lots of branches arising from the external carotid we know internal carotid doesn't give rise to any branch so now there are numerous vessels we all know all name vessels arising from the external carotid right from the first one this is this is ascending pharyngeal then if i go further this is thyroid superior thyroid then i go further lingual and the facial and the facial going laterally if you follow this vessel this going see this i am following this vessel going lateral to the mandible this is facial artery going back so further i am going further now the carotid is going behind can you see the external carotid turning behind mm -hmm. yes the the first branch the first posterior branch it gives off is occipital can you see very clear yes going further it gives further branch posterior branch this is posterior auricular artery then going behind the mandible see this this is mandible and this is dividing into two terminal branches can you see very clear yes the outer one is superficial temporal and this bigger one is internal maxillary now i am going to follow this internal maxillary see this internal maxillary see my cursor can you see this mm -hmm. it is gone medial to the mandible and this vessel is going see this this vessel is going this vessel see my cursor where this vessel is going anterior to this tumor this is all tumor going anterior anterior here and here into the pterygopalatine fossa can you see very clear Yes. Yes. Now, to ascertain the level of this vessel, where it, wherever this has to be uh, caught in the pterygopalatine fossa, you have to catch at the right place. Let me show you where exactly. This is the basis of you know endoscopic excision of JNA. See this vessel; it is going there. It is going in the pterygopalatine fossa. This is how this vessel goes on the normal side. This is this vessel. which is here on the disease side this is the vessel so if i look at this vessel at the coronal picture see this this my vessel is here here and now i am going to follow see this vessel is riding up riding up and this is at this level it is entering into the pterygopalatine fossa see this here so endoscopically to catch this vessel in a bigger tumor is a very very difficult task sometimes 
how can you catch with the ct angiogram my vessel is here i can use my you know see this this vessel looks like around 1.8 cm above the level of the floor of the maxillary sinus 1.7 to 1.8 can you see this vessel here so while looking at this vessel i should have a fairly good idea where to catch this vessel and devascularize this tumor see in this surgery why i am able to take this case endoscopic from vascularity the internal maxillary being the principal vessel my entire goal during surgery is not to enter into the tumor at any point of time without devascularizing it and that is how we vascularize devascularize we find the internal maxillary at the right place before entering the tumor and catch it and devascularize the tumor to a certain extent that's my coagulator will do this is the principle of you know endoscopic surgery for juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibromas without embolization so in our practice 95 to 98% of the time we have been able to remove such tumors without embolization embolization of course is a good strategy to devascularize the tumor but it has its own pros and cons the embolizing you know intervention radiologist should be very very expert to prevent dissemination of the agent to the dangerous connection to the internal carotid circulation otherwise it can have its deleterious effects the cost is another factor the tumor related factors are different so embolization is not always a you know uh, uh, always a good thing always a welcome thing i would say and with this technique which i am going to show you today this being such a extensive tumor going intracanally cavernous sinus far extensive uh, into the infratemporal fossa you know even towards the parapharyngeal space sphenoid sinus everywhere will be able to remove without embolization and most of the time even without transfusion with this surgical strategy to catch the vessel first and this ct angiogram is the principal investigation to give you adequate information about the vascularity number 2 once you deal with the carotid artery you should have you should have complete information about the cross circulation at the level of the brain now see these are two carotid arteries anteriorly and this is the basal artery behind can you see if i look at the cross circulation see these these are giving two posterior cerebral arteries can you see and these carotids are giving two anterior cerebral making a com and the a2 very clear this is anterior communicating artery and this is the posterior communicating artery arising from the posterior cerebral going towards the carotid to complete the circle of villi so what i believe see this is a cross circulation adequate cross circulation to get more information the dsa is gold standard digital subsection angiography but this gives you a fairly good idea that the patient has a you know good anterior and posterior communication good anterior and posterior circulation in case of any you know unfortunate situation of uh, arterial injury uh, still there is adequate circulation to sacrifice the vessel without giving intracranial complications so dsa will definitely give more information in case your artery is at risk it is completely in case you know giving lot of arterial uh, disabilities uh, dis deformities then obviously the dsa is important in this case the tumor is approaching the carotid artery but not invading it okay now this information to me is still inadequate i need more information about the diagnosis about the extensions about the arterial involvement about the you know vascularity from the mri so my first mri first mri would be a t2 weighted mri t2 weighted mri t2 weighted see this Dr. this Dr. yes Yes, of course. Invaded all these uh, possible spaces. Yes, you can see. Uh, but uh, at the same time, the main vascular supply, which is the IMAX, is uh, in a kind of favorable location. It is anterior to the tumor. Yes. See, it is always anterior. If you look at the, you know, uh, structures into the pterygopalatine fossa, they are displayed in a very, very unique fashion. In the pterygopalatine fossa, the anterior. network is formed by the internal maxillary and its branches 
and the posterior network is the nerve the uh, the v2 and its branches the pterygopeltan ganglion and its branches and this tumor since arises from behind from the pterygoid wedge as it progresses as it enlarges it pushes the posterior wall of the maxilla anteriorly so it pushes all the structures anteriorly including the vessels so bigger the tumor more dehiscent is the wall because of the pressure erosion and more the vessel is pressed anteriorly so this uh, that's a welcome you know sort of thing for the surgeon as the bigger the tumor pushes the vessel more anteriorly so you can identify the vessel and uh, you know take into control before dealing with the tumor if without taking the vessel con control uh, in control if you try to enter into the tumor this bleeds heavily and this can show what it is and one cannot actually handle such kind of tumor endoscopically because endoscopy requires visualization with massive bleeding you cannot maintain the visualization and then you cannot remove the tumor and uh, completely you know the biggest advantage of endoscopy in such situation it is not about avoiding a scar that is the least of the important thing if i enumerate the biggest advantage of the endoscopy key is the visualization it provides it gives you bright illumination magnification to the on site wherever you want and this tumor since has a propensity to invade the various crevices canal fissures all around at the skull base level it gives you opportunity to remove this tumor under vision from everywhere which open approach doesn't so that is the biggest advantage the only concern is the bleeding and if you are able to uh, you know take uh, the bleeding in control by means of such surgical strategy by means of good embolization still you can remove lot of tumor with certain uh, uh, in, in our in our practice we have certain reservations regarding uh, endoscopic approach we have certain indications for the open approach particularly if you have a vessels when the tumor goes intracranial and it acquires vascularity from the intracranial vessels then you cannot try to you know avoid the tumor down as it can open up the vessels intracranially and can continue to bleed this is one of the indication when the large vessel like carotid is 360 and case invaded particularly in revision cases obviously we avoid the norm, open approach and then we take lot of you know help from the interventional radiologists and go by the open approach sometime with neurosurgeon by combined approach and so many things so there are indications for such approaches but most of the time particularly in primary cases over 90% 98% of the situations we have been able to remove it endoscopically very efficiently which much better is an you know um, you know outcome it is the outcome which matters if some approach gives me better outcome if open approach gives me better outcome than endoscopy with you know so scar and everything i still or the open approach so it is ultimately the outcome which matters because this is a benign tumor like any other benign tumor the answer is complete surgical excision if you leave the tumor behind it is bound to come back and we call it as a recurrence so this so called recurrence is actually a residual tumor left behind which grows uh, grows and become more difficult to remove and more extensive and more challenging now see on mri t2 weighted mri you can see the large flow voids can you see this is the internal maxillary on the lateral aspect of the tumor this is the internal maxillary you can see the large you know infratemporal fossa component this is the nasal component that's the sphenoid component that's the orbital component orbital fissure component and if i follow it it goes continue behind in the uh, cavernous sinus see the carotid artery can you see very clear and the tumor enters the cavernous sinus and the temporal lobe from laterally never through the sphenoid sinus this is very important because this tumor never ever invades the sinus mucosa so this is t2 weighted imaging now how can you confirm that this is not a malignant tumor or something else why it is you know uh, the jna only see this this is what a diffusion weighted imaging can you see this picture this is a very very important investigation which we always advocate in these patients and we have couple of examples to justify it this is basically a bioimaging this true bioimaging from mri the reason being it assesses the 
architecture of the tissue what you are imaging so in this diffusion imaging what you assess is the is the uh, motion of the water molecules in the magnetic field so tumor which has more water content will have more diffusion see this bright diffusion tumor which have less water content will show diffusion restriction will appear dark see this what jna is full of blood jna is nothing blood lake of bloods in the and the vessels within it is nothing but lake of blood and so it gives good it is it is water and water only and it, there is no diffusion restriction and what you can see is the bright can you see this brightness no diffusion restriction had this been a malignant tumor what does a malignant tumor have kind of architecture malignant tumors have more nuclear cytoplasmic ratio more cellularity less water content and had this been a malignant tumor this entire what it appearing bright would appear as absolutely dark and that is a crystal clear you know differentiation of a benign from a malignant tumor with high high uh, you know specificity and sensitivity you know i'll give you couple of example recently a case was referred to us 12 year old child occasional bleeding complete nasal blockage mass in the nasopharynx ct was done and diagnosed as a angiofibroma came to us looking like jna but the endoscopic appearance was not really jna so we got mri done and was a huge diffusion restriction so we ultimately went in for biopsy and it appeared as a rhabdomyosarcoma so you have to be very uh, you know uh, very very um, careful about the diagnosis and this diffusion imaging will prevents you from deviating from a true diagnosis this is really really helping and not only jna in other head neck tumors other head neck pathologies by 95% of the times you know you can with uh, you know quite um, uh, confidence differentiate the benign from the malignant tumors only by the diffusion imaging the kind of diffusion restriction the tumor shows gives you a fairly good idea whether it is benign or malignant benign tumor have more water content less nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and more diffusion and when the malignant tumor have more and more diffusion restrictions lymphomas have highest diffusion restriction and many times you can diagnose lymphomas only by the diffusion mri that's a very very important investigation now coming to the contrast we all know this tumor being vascular takes up the contrast extensively see the contrast imaging this shows you see the bunch of vessels within the tumor can you appreciate the large large vessels within the tumor this is yeah. just the yeah. network of vessels see the kind of contrast it is taking up and see the various extensions of the tumor this is all one tumor with various extension see the center is here at the pterygoid wedge and it is spreading circumferentially everywhere can you see so yes. the goal of surgery is not to enter into the tumor exposure 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 all around and then pull wherever the tumor has gone back into the nasal cavity to extirpate out so goal is very clear not to enter into the tumor exposure exposure and exposure and you'll see my 90% of the time will be invested in exposure exposure and exposure so that we can control the vessels on the surface of the tumor control the principal vessel entering into the tumor and then pull out wherever it has gone like in this particular case i have a very clear strategy see this lateral component being too big it cannot be accommodate in the nasal cavity at one time can you see so my strategy is is a planned division see this what i will do this is the level of the lateral nasal wall can you see here we'll take the vessel in control and divide the tumor in the planned fashion at the level of the lateral nasal wall and then we'll remove the medial component of the tumor medial means the nasal cavity nasopharynx and the sphenoid component we'll push in the oral cavity and remove from the oral cavity side and then we'll have ample of space in the nasal cavity to accommodate the lateral component of the tumor which will be pulled inside the nasal cavity and remove it so that is going to be our study that's a, a usual strategy for larger tumors with a planned division after vascular control so first goal is vascular control number 1 number 2 see this lateral extension so my strategy for such tumors 
as a modified dankers to begin with so that we can reach out to the most lateral aspect of the tumor with a zero degree scope my another strategy for this particular surgery is use of coblation on the surface coblation is like man of the match for this particular surgery i call it the reason being the maxillary vascular maximum vascularity for this tumor is, is towards the surface and coblation gives you great opportunity to coblate the surface whatever comes into your picture so whatever tumor getting exposed we keep on coblating to shrink the tumor to reduce the vascularity to handle it better without bleeding which i am going to show you intraoperatively as well third is this kind of you know posterior extension see this tumor where it is going posteriorly see it is rising high in the infratemporal fossa number 1 this is another uh, area where it takes additional vascularity if you see from behind can you see this can you see some vascularity coming to the tumor from behind yes this is counterproductive this is mostly from the middle meningeal vessel when tumor rises high in the infratemporal fossa this is counterproductive since we are not embolizing so we expect some bleeding at this point of time why we avoid this tumor from the this vessel and then we will pack it immediately and coblate it because the principal vessel we are taking into control so it doesn't mean that you take the internal maxillary control in control and it is going to be totally avascular this tumor wherever it takes attachment it acquires additional vascularity from the periosteum and additional vessel this is coming from behind is trouble some which will control with our experience using a coblation using surgi cell using you know surgi flow or whatever material to control the bleeding which i am going to show you intraoperatively so we are going to face some bleeding as well now see from here this tumor is rising in the inferior orbital fissure this is orbit this is inferior orbital fissure this is superior orbital fissure and then it is going towards the cavernous sinus and this is cavernous carotid artery see how the tumor is in relationship close relationship with the carotid artery but we know it has grown from anterior to posterior going towards the carotid artery still there is a good plane of periosteum intact from the carotid artery which i am going to show you to give us good sense of relief i would show i would say that it is not invading the vessel per se and we'll be able to pull the tumor the way it has gone behind so my all these extensions believe me would be a cake walk one side have a thorough exposure i will just pick up all these lateral posterior superior everywhere extension pull them in the nasal cavity that's it because they are extending everywhere but not invading anywhere so you have to expose and pull them back to the area of origin now see in the coronal picture about the relationship of the carotid artery to the tumor let me show you see this carotid artery can you see the carotid artery cavernous yes sir now see why i am showing it is saying that it is not invading let me change the window setting and see the periosteum which is enhancing see i am changing the window setting can you see the enhancing periosteum all around see periosteum of the carotid enhances this is a very well defined plane between the see this is the plane between the tumor and the carotid artery can you see very clear yes that's the kind of mri you need to give you amazing information see how to order the imaging it the, again the onus lies on the surgeon if you order an mri pns the radiologist will do one or two sequence and get away because every sequence has to be shot separately and it takes a lot of time and money so the onus is on the surgeon when you uh, you know suspect some pathology that what kind of mri to be ordered so in this particular case we order ct angiogram carotids t2 weighted fat suppress mri contrast multiplanar mri axial coronal sagittal sections a diffusion weighted imaging to complete your imaging protocol if you don't order and just order mri pns the 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 radiologist will do one or two sequence and get away in 5 minutes so onus is again the surgeon many a time you know what happens patient come to us with the mri in the hand mri a print out in the hand which is as good as useless to us we need this 
kind of dynamic imaging a complete comprehensive imaging and unfortunately we are forced to order the mri again with this kind of protocol so this is something we always propagate once you suspect some pathology you must order complete sequences in your prescription so the complete comprehensive mri can be done in dicom format this is a dynamic mri you can compare all the three sequences and run together to have a complete 3d information so this is about imaging our case is induced we are ready to go meantime uh, we are ready to take up any questions any suggestion dr rekade you want me to show anything more on imaging Yeah, they already the discussed. Yes. No. I have answered, and I will repeat again. Get diffusion imaging. If you have a doubt on diffusion imaging showing restriction, it can be something else than JNA, and then you have to plan a biopsy. Yes. Any any other no, question? Yes, having seen all these uh, uh, extensions and uh, uh, in your experience, uh, any recurrent uh, journeys and all that, have you ever have to consider radiotherapy as a <laughs> never? Uh, what the situation will be? I would say never. See, never. JNA diagnosis itself is frightening for the surgeon, particularly with such kind of extensions like. This can be considered intracranial extension. It is intracranial going into the cavernous sinus, no doubt about it. And it has been traditionally discussed that with such difficult extension where chances of complications are more with the surgical exercise, we remove the tumor partially and advocate radiation. This is, I would say, ridiculous in such patient to advocate radiation. These are young patients. Radiation has its own, uh, you know, uh, implications, complications, long-term complications, including future development of malignancy and we never never order with the improvement in the surgical technique with the improvement in the imaging technique with the instrumentation equipments you know camera system telescopes uh, image guided system now the surgical you know field has grown so big and we have been able to remove such tumor i have shown you the mri giving me clear picture that tumor is not invading the carotid artery it is approaching and we can still remove it endoscopically without any fear so if you have a good exposure there is no point in ex you know subjecting such patient to radiation this is ridiculous radiation is indicated let me tell you in our uh, setup for we get sometimes multiple operated you know revision surgeries the patient operated five times seven times with true invasion see once the primary tumor i would say this jna primary tumor is a well behaved tumor it has a predictable extension it has a predictable vascularity you can say now what happens once you take this vascularity in control and leave the tumor behind then it acquires aberrant vascularity got my point and many a times it becomes more purely invasive tumors we have seen tumors truly invading the brain tissue revision cases we have seen tumor truly invading the carotid artery because they acquire aberrant vascularity from the internal carotid system and become more and more invasive and in those situations your surgical exercise should be accordingly you know directed and many a times we are we have to resort to the open approach as i said earlier uh, for you know more and more help from the intervention radiologist and still if it is truly invading the vessel and you know uh, the hemorrhage is imminent you are forced to leave behind some part of the tumor and then you are forced to radiate you are forced to radiate you know radiation is never you know in your primary protocol in those um, unfortunate situations you are forced to radiate to prevent tumor growth because radiation doesn't kill the tumor it incites fibrosis it invites fibrosis in the vessel supplying the tumor and it ultimately contains the growth of the tumor it doesn't kill the tumor so it can regrow again it can convert to malignant tumor frank malignancy we have seen a uh, converting into angiosarcomas after radiation we have got such cases so this is how our protocol for radiation which is never in the primary list thank you and uh, in your vast experience probably one of the world's 
largest uh, series of chains, and you see how expensive it is. What is the youngest patient you have to operate on? Uh, youngest patient I have operated is a um, uh, seven year old child, a very big tumor. Very big tumor, and this is again a big concern. You know, children have less blood volume. The tumor is more aggressive, and particularly when the tumor comes far anteriorly towards the anterior nares, it becomes so difficult to negotiate your endoscope as well. You know, and many a times in children, because the surgical time again is a big issue in children with the ongoing bleeding, many a times. you may have to taking in all these things into consideration with kind of tumor going anteriorly big tumor you may have to resort with the help of intervention radiologists or or you ultimately you may have to resort to open surgery with the help of endoscopy some sort of sort of thing because you have to take into account all these things in young patients elderly i have operated jna in a patient who has been operated seven times earlier and a 48 old 40 year old patient 48 year old patient ultimately invaded the brain and turned into angiosarcoma so it all depends upon you know the pathology so the bottom line is this is a primary tumor and complete removal is the only way to cure so we should put in everything regarding imaging imaging is the best exercise to gauge the true extensions of tumor you know with inadequate imaging you can miss the tumor behind and again uh, it can come back that's why i always advocate see carefully where the tumor is going see this many a time what happens see this is the pterygoid process can you see this is the greater wing of the sphenoid this tumor has a propensity to invade the marrow bone particularly the marrow bone of the sphenoid and the clivus which may be easily missed on surface visualization your true imaging will tell you that it has invaded the marrow bone and then complete removal is the key you have to completely remove that bone in spite of looking normal on superficial visualization and this is here our t2 weighted imaging is crucial look at this t2 weighted imaging this is fat suppress imaging can you see this is our one of the primary you know sequence fat suppress imaging fat suppress imaging means it suppresses the fat everywhere see wherever the fat is it dark now the pterygoid bone and the sphenoid bone this greater wing of sphenoid contains the marrow and marrow contains the fat so wherever is the fat it enhances on a regular t2 weighted it enhances on fat suppresses it doesn't enhance now see see in this particular imaging look at the right side of the pterygoid process it is absolutely dark because the fat is suppressed now look at this look at this side this is dark absolutely dark can you see on the right side mm -hmm. yes now look at the left side it is enhancing what is this this the tumor is infiltrated by the yeah there is a this marrow space is infiltrated by the tumor had there been fat only it would have been suppressed on fat suppress mri in spite of the fat suppress mri you are seeing hyper intense signal what is that it cannot be anything else than tumor now this bone on surface visualization even on endos on endoscopy may appear normal to you but i know from imaging that marrow is invaded by the tumor with this fat suppress imaging and this is the indication for extensive removal of the pterygoids so you can remove the microscopic tumor which is contained within the marrow spaces otherwise it is going to come back so you know if you see the largest of the series of the uh, revision surgeries recurrences whatever the biggest reason behind the so called recurrence is the tumor left behind in the pterygoid space in the pterygoid bone in the sphenoid bone in the marrow spaces which was overlooked by the previous surgeon because of inadequate imaging i tell you honestly that's the only reason inadequate imaging the surgeon doesn't know where the tumor is going deep into beyond the visual 
visualization and then it can it is bound to come back once it comes back it is going to be more difficult any revision surgery a thousand times challenging than a primary surgery by all means so this is how an imaging can save you from the biggest of the recurrences and that's how i always advocate see this for last uh, almost uh, uh, one hour we have been discussing about imaging 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 this is most important a tool believe me for surgeons to guide we have now complete information about all the extensions we have now complete information about the vascularity and the cross flow we have complete information about the hidden aspect of the tumor in the pterygoid and the sphenoid bone can you see and this is what we expect from the imaging you know imaging is technology and technology is growing at a much bigger pace than the surgical science and we have to take now is the time to take the advantage of this technology and this is what you know, these workshops are uh, the you know platform to exchange our ideas and this is always we propagate that your imaging should be adequate and one should himself the surgeon should himself or herself be able to read the imaging because this kind of information cannot be given by the radiologist we need dynamic information we need information from surgical point of view it's not that the static information tumor is going here and there and there we can see know that get to know but how the vessels are entering how the tumor is growing how the bone spaces are involved this best information to be printed 3d in the surgeon mind can be goes when the surgeon himself reads the imaging so we should be able to read imaging ourselves to get more adequate information this is what uh, our message is any other question dr rakade before we get on to the surgical uh, with the endoscopic picture uh, surgery now that was absolute radiology master class on the jna mm -hmm. so it uh, all the details and uh, Each and every vessel that was amazing. We saw all the uh, branches of external carotene, and uh, we traced them to their uh, destination. Uh, that was great. Thank you. So also, the also here is the uh, investigation. We investigated thoroughly with the CT, uh, MRI, and uh, request for appropriate uh, information, and look for all the uh, vascular information on your imaging studies, and so plan your surgical strategy. So. thank you so and feel free to interrupt me during surgery as well for any questions or any queries or any suggestion any point of time i would love to be interrupted for more and more discussion and thank you dr louis any questions from your side or any suggestion before we embark on the surgical part no i mean i think you the equation but obviously it's very extensive and um, the prognosis so you you would be aiming for a complete clearance of this tumor today thank you thank right. you thank you so in couple of minutes i'll be back with the endoscopic picture now thank you yeah sorry it is a penalty you heard it there but that's okay uh, that's probably that was was the the hmm hmm देखा तूने आगे क्या ऑर्डर रहेगा लेने का और एडिनोटोनसिल आप कौन सा करेंगे बाकी सब कुछ सुन सुन I think the point as well of the correct protocols for your scan and the responsibility on the surgeon to ask for those because it's very tricky to get a good relationship with the radiologist in your department. You know they know what scan, what protocols, what you need, but it's you know. I think it is on us to ask for the correct protocols so that we get the information that we need to do the surgery safely. And it is more and more for the TV towards relying on the radiologists to plan the surgery and the operation. Mira, phone, dear. It is very good to be taken to all the 3D planes. Uh, 
Okay. दूसरा कैमरा लेता ना टेलीस्कोप अच्छा लेता और अच्छे चार पांच है यार देखना है दे हेलो कैन यू या सो वी आर विद एंडोस्कोपिक पिक्चर नाउ लेट मी न्यू व्हेन यू गेट द एंडोस्कोपिक पिक्चर यस सो देयर आर दिस इज ऑल इंस्पिरेटेड सिक्रीशंस दिस इज द इंफीरियर टर्बिनेट ऑन दिस साइड and see the tumor behind can you see okay. and see the nasal space which is not very big not very uh, i would say it's a narrow space so what i am using first for the nasal in the decongestion i am using these marrow cell pieces soaked in adrenaline to decongest the nasal cavity and some gauze pieces this <coughs> this is tumor so i can afford to use the gauze pieces in endoscopic sinus surgery we don't use gauze pieces more and more marrow cell to respect the mucociliary activity but here this is not immuno compromised situation like you know sinus surgery and see just applying the topical adrenaline a first application will decongest the capillaries and open up the space and prevents its systemic absorption we never inject in the nose for anything can you see after the first application yes, yes. see how the nasal space has opened up see much better now yes. so this this initial preparation is very very important see in endoscopy the visualization is the key and to maintain the in order to maintain the visualization the bleeding should be minimum and this is afforded by your uh, you know, <coughs> all the help from the decongestant from the anesthesiologist this is one surgery unlike sinus surgery where we go for or request our anesthesiologist to uh, give hypotensive anesthesia 
this is one surgery. In sinus surgery, we never ask for hypotensive anesthesia because there the source of bleeding is capillaries and here pure arterial bleeding is expected. So, we expect our anesthesiologist to give hypotensive anesthesia. We load these patients with a fluid, with a starch, whatever, so that whatever bleeding happens is the diluted blood. So there are a lot of strategies from the anesthesiologist side to help this tumor removal by endoscopic approach. See this tumor which was rising up, that's not invading anywhere. Can you see? Yes. Which I'm pushing down with my gauge pieces and see the middle tabinate in front of you. So this is how you can see how the tumor, this is tumor and from the surface you can see it is looking, you know, angry. This angry looking picture is classical of genius. Now, my man of the match tool which is coming into the field. This is what? Coblation and this is the vent I am using is a pro size max and see what I am doing. This is my man of the match tool. I am doing surface coagulation. Can you see? This this, this, yeah, full, full, the full on nine and five. See this, this is giving surface coagulation. Can you see this particular tool is a wonder tool which has the ability to irrigate all the time? Can you see this? It has an ability to coagulate, it has an ability to cut as well. So one tool along with the suction to take away the blood and the secretions from the field to give you amazing visualization. See my, during entire surgery, this one tool will be working and giving you all the things which you expect. So what I am doing is surface coagulation because at any point of time you happen to touch this tumor with your instrument, it starts bleeding. So this surface coagulation, first of all, takes the surface in control to prevent bleeding with the instrument. Number two, it shrinks the tumor as well. See maximum tum bleeding in this tumor is towards the surface. As the tumor grows bigger and bigger, the more and more central part become necrotic. So this is how... This tumor has to be accordingly handled. See, whatever tumor which comes in your view, keep coagulating on the surface. I told you my 90% of the time would be invested in exposure, exposure, exposure. I will never enter into the tumor in that 90% of the time. My tumor removal would be last 10% of the entire surgical timing. See how the surface is being coagulated. Can you see clearly? Yes. I hope the picture is good there. Yes, very good. I think very clear. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Let me know for anything I can do more regarding picture transmission. And I am grateful to Mr. Dinesh for this uh, telecast. I am so used to working with him as a sort of addiction he has given. The kind of comfort he gives with the live telecast is amazing. Yeah, it's, uh, fantastic work. The quality of transmission is uh, See now the surface. Now the more nasal cavity has opened up. And this wonder tool which has all abilities. Now, I told you in the beginning. We will never, never think of entering into the tumor in the beginning before taking the vascularity in control and before adequate exposure. Okay? So now, my first part of the exposure will involve a modified dankers. Modified dankers means, see this tumor has gone laterally and there is a lateral wall of the nose which is the biggest obstacle to, <coughs> you know, to reach out the tumor. 
so we have to remove this lateral wall of the nose or the medial wall of the maxilla along with the anterolateral wall to get on to the most lateral part of the tumor head on with zero degree endoscope so this is the modified dankers approach described by sternman and canfield is amazing it gives you a good paramedian highway to approach all these tumors and so in order to remove all this my landmarks are my superior limit is the orbit i will show you under vision how we spare entering into the orbit how we stay away from the orbit so in the beginning again my tool will be coblation this is the axilla so i stay roughly a centimeter below the axilla and coagulate this periosteum see this is a really vascularized area and see coblation it takes care of all the with the coblator see we can coblate the surface to minimize the bleeding this is my man of the match so this involves removal of the maxilla medial wall of the maxilla and the inferior turbinate which is a separate bone see this i am coagulating not only the medial wall of the maxilla but the inferior turbinate as well which is a separate bone and this inferior meatus as well so that we can flush the bone removal up to the floor of the nose and see my end pardon yeah navigation most of the time not needed navigation most of the time not needed yet it helps you improving your localization with experience the need for that is more and more reduced i am not against it. if you feel like using it you can use it now see this is the initial coagulation see this and my anterior limit is this bone this is piriform aperture and we are not supposed to go far anteriorly here see almost a centimeter anteriorly here this is the lower ella which should never be destroyed otherwise it will give some deformity and need some rhinoplasty correction now now my next goal is i am using the cutting for the first time and remove this periosteum See, removing this periosteum to expose the bone now. Can you see? What an amazing cutting tool with no bleeding at all. That's the beauty of the coagulator. See the visualization. Endoscopy means visualization. See, my coagulator gives me amazing opportunity to go bloodless. and see i will show you my anterior limit soon can you see the bone of the piriform aperture now yes very clearly this is my anterior limit see this is our anterior limit and my lower limit is going to be till the floor of the nose wherever is the bleeding you can always use the coagulation immediately see from top to bottom the entire piriform aperture ta hata hai usko koi user hai can you see the piriform aperture thoroughly now see this now i told you this is a separate bone this inferior turbinate is a separate bone see this turbinate can you see this yes this match the turbinate coagulator find all the see i have fractured the turbinate like this that's a separate bone hata yahan se hata
Warte. Yes, now I am removing this periosteum of the inferior meatus. Can you see? And see my lower limit is the floor of the nose. See this? Completely flush. Now this cobulator helps you control this thing much better because the inferior turbinate gets its milk from the vessel which is a branch of spine which runs through the turbinate from behind. Still the cobulator helps you control that bleeding effectively. See this? My this turbinate has to be removed. So expose my lateral wall thoroughly. Pardon? Do you always use the cobulator for your trimmer work? Yes, yes. Always. Cobulator is the key for everything. Mm -hmm. See the kind of comfort my one hand is using the cobulator. Other hand, I am holding the endoscope. And this cobulator is everything. Suction, irrigation, cutting, coagulation, everything in one this, in this magic wand. I hope the picture is... Yes, see there is no bleeding at all. And we are reaching more and more behind without any issue. See this? This is a tumor. This is a one component which has various extension and we have to expose all. And all the intervening bone has to go. The principle behind this surgery, uh, efficient, I would say, endoscopic surgery, is the exposure, exposure. Inadequate exposure will invite complications. See this? Till this, now the entire lateral wall is exposed. See completely? We have dealt with this extremely vascular structure without any issues. Now, see this the pyriform aperture. Now I will go towards the anterior lateral wall and this tumor has massive lateral extension as well. See this? sub periosteal towards the anterior lateral wall suction and see it severs lot of neurovascular bundles see this carefully these are all anterior superior alveolar neurovascular bundles see the now anterior superior alveolar nerve branch and we have to sever this to reach laterally my usual lateral limit is the v2 Usual lateral limit. If you really want to go further for more lateral extension, there is a technique described by Professor Paul Casanova as V2 transposition. If you transpose the V2, you can go 360 degree even all around and beyond. See, this is the V2. Can you see this? This is the inferior orbital foramen. So right now I am not going beyond that. I it's not needed in this particular case. And see, yes, for a couple of weeks, definite numbness because it supplies all the canines and the incisors, upper canines and incisors. And this now has numerous, you know, ramification, intercommunication.
communications ultimately it uh, regenerates you know with other branches and most of the time it doesn't bother in long run so this is expected that you have to tell your patient before as well see this bone exposure niche section mein complete exposure of this bone see here now i will punch out this thin bone anterior bone and then will enter the maxillary sinus this is the thin bone can be punched out with a lux forceps any bone punch whatever see this real and <laughs> now i am going to use with um, uh, my speed drill this state of the art metronic see this this is transnasal bar which is a inherent 15 degree curvature in the shaft so the shaft doesn't come in the way see what i am doing to show you my superior limit i want to see my superior limit of the maxillary sinus first so as to avoid unnecessary entry into the orbit see now i have entered into the maxillary sinus head on can you see we will show you in side picture soon let me widen a little bit action see the interior of the maxillary sinus see that and what i intend to see is my superior limit with this dankers i don't want to damage the orbit i don't want the unnecessary unwanted orbital entry so until the orbital roof i can uh, go up किसको पकड़ा दिया तुमने सेक्शन सेक्शन सी जस्ट शोइंग यू द ऑर्बिटल रूफ ऑर्बिटल फ्लोर सॉरी द साइनस रूफ विच इज माई सुपीरियर लिमिट i want to expose this sinus roof thoroughly so that i can define my superior limit adequately see now inside this prominence in the medial wall this prominence here belongs to the nasolacrimal duct hello in this in this surgery bleeding nahi dikhni chahiye in this surgery the only important structure which comes your way only vital structure which comes your way is the nasolacrimal duct and you have to obviously transect it to go ahead because it comes in your way the best way to prevent epiphora is to cut it flush with the level of the orbital floor if you cut flush with the level of the orbital floor it doesn't come your way let me show you idhar sachan gar halka se tumur ko dabana halka always see this this is your entry into the maxilla can you see the level of the orbital roof orbital floor and this is the level you have to remove this bone until then so since the bone is thinned out so i can afford to remove with my punch again see this under vision more precisely and see behind is your nasolacrimal system 
Can you see the nasolacrimal duct? This is your nasolacrimal duct, this one. I hope it is very clear. Yes, you can see the nasolacrimal duct. So we will thoroughly flush this bone until the level of the floor of the nose. So that I can cut it flush to prevent an overhanging duct. This is a strategy to prevent this duct getting fibrous and giving happy for either of now. एक काम तो ढंग से कर ले यार चंद करो सी वेरी सॉफ्ट टिश्यू ब्लीडिंग यू कैन यूज योर कॉबलेटर सी दिस माय डक्ट इज वेरी मच यू नो हैंगिंग in my field. Can you see very clear? So I will further improve my, you know, exposure. Some more lateral first. See all this bone I have to flush with the floor. Can you see? This is important so it doesn't upset the instrument, deeper instrument. Should be thought with the lower one. So I am quickly flushing it with the floor suction. Just to reorient you. This is the lower bone I am removing. Contralateral side. Hello. You. Oh, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So this approach usually gives you enough access to the most lateral extent, or do you sometimes need to combine it with um, an approach coming from the contralateral side through the knee septum? Yes. So in our strategy, I will come later. Whenever this tumor grows towards the midline. It can acquire the vascularity from the contralateral circulation. So we are, um, are very careful about that and control. I will show you once I will reach to the midline uh, when we separate the tumor from the nasal septum and the nasopharyngeal roof. Can you see the maxilla head on maxillary sinus? Mm -hmm. yes. So I will uh, get more exposure by flushing with the floor. This flushing with the floor is very important. सक्षम तो रखिए आप। This is very important for your instrumentation later on. Flush, flush, flush thoroughly.
से दिस दिब्राइट सी एवरीवेयर द मोर एंड मोर एक्सपेंस इज द की आई हैव रिमूव पार्ट ऑफ द लैटरल वॉल सी माई आई हैव डिफाइंड माई लेवल द रूफ ऑफ द मैक्सलरी साइनस कैन यू सी वेरी क्लियर I have defined the level of the floor of the maxillary sinus. Yeah, level of the floor of the nasal cavity. Here, can you see? Yes. This this is my required lateral exposure. You know, this is very very important to have adequate exposure. Now I will remove this bone, the thin bone, and will remove all this lateral wall bone until the posterior wall. This all lateral wall bone until. The the maxilla this is the unseenet process now we have see what i am taking out i am flushing with the floor mm -hmm. everything coming in the way has to go until the posterior wall quickly the brider and see the nasal lacrimal duct overhanging which will take See the posterior wall of the maxilla. Hey, yeah. In life, there is no work. Section. See, this is the remnant of the ancient process. This is. Let me show you my nasal lacrimal duct. See this. getting it out of the bone out of the canal bone see this mm -hmm. yes. i'll remove this entire bone all around i am removing this entire bone all around the brider See the entire bone all around being taken care of. Can you see all around? Is it? See the nasal duct overhanging. there nothing all around and now this is the time to do a sharp transaction see this are mm yaar -hmm. raja the sharp transaction of the nasal lacrimal duct can you see above yes see this is the Nasal lacrimal duct, which has been transected, see. So now it doesn't overhang. It is not going to come into our field anymore. What my point? And this, since it is not going to overhang below, this is not going to get fibrosis and give OIP fora. If otherwise, if it gives, you need to do a proper. endoscopic dcr further koi kaam nahi kar rahe the dekh ke kal mat dikhana see now the posterior wall is flush with the lateral wall very clear now a little bit of the lower part is still there drill which i am going to flush with viru ani see this cup all of the <laughs> maxilla mm -hmm. this i will flush thoroughly with the floor 
still possible. Everything has to be thoroughly flushed. Yeah, so this is, let me tell you, this is a wonder bar. See, this is pure transnasal, such a sleek yes. bar with a natural 15 degree curvature. So when you use inside, your shaft doesn't come in the way. Come later. That's my point? Yeah. Um, you know, I was using at a speed of, I was using at a speed of 60,000 to 70,000 RPM. This is a single use bar. Cost is a limiting factor, but this is simply amazing. Mm -hmm. Simply amazing tool for the skull base work. Yeah, and, and the one that you're using, is it coarse diamond? Yeah, this is coarse diamond, yes. Coarse diamond. Absolutely. This is very, very safe. Coarse diamond bar. With a, I'm using the 4.5 mm coarse diamond bar. See, wherever the soft tissue bleeding is, you have to use the cobblation. Now more tumor is coming into picture, see this? More and more surface coagulation is required. More and more surface coagulation. This tumor has a propensity to invade certain structures and spare certain structures. This tumor, as I said earlier, never, never invades the paranasal sinus mucosa. See this? This tumor preferentially invades the turbinate and the septum. This is middle turbinate, which is almost always an attachment with the tumor. See this? So wherever the mucosal surface, I am cobulating to improve my field. And see the value of cobulation. Simply amazing. Now behind this paranasal sinus mucosa here, See, I am removing this maxillary sinus mucosa thoroughly. See this? Yes. Behind that is the pterygopalatine fossa, which is our area of interest. See, only one tool is working, that is cobulator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see. Yes, 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 you are right. See this bone, it is bulging. Can you see this? Yes. Because of the tumor pressure from behind. Mm -hmm. The huge tumor behind. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, not in sinus surgery, in adenoid I will show you in uh, these procedures, in CS. I know yeah, I will show you we have a case today and all these procedures, even in the intracranial procedures, it is very very safe to be used even on the brain. Okay. So here, but it has to be used judiciously uh, whenever you are using the cutting part because cutting is um, ability very fast, you know, and see here on the bony surface, I am not using complex bony surface, that will ruin my blade. So bony surface, I am using this country. can you see this? Never use the complex surface, it is best for something only, yeah. So this is my initial part of the exposure after the dankers, can you see very clear? Now what you see in front, what you see in front is your posterior wall of the maxilla. And we have reached now head on, see in the entire surgery, in spite of, uh, you know, extreme lateral and superior extension, throughout the course I will be using only zero degree. Zero degree gives you best visualization without any disorientation. And the principle of skull base is to use zero degree, zero degree, zero degree, except set in certain situations when you have to look into the corners, you can use angled scopes. But the primary scope is zero degree, always. See the entire maxilla is exposed thoroughly. Can you see very clear now? 
and all the time the visualization has to be improved with color visualization has to be improved with cognition 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 except on the bone yes so this is my initial you know exposure and see the bloodless field see the bloodless field my next goal is to get into the pterygopalatine fossa this bone is the thing which is in between which has to be removed See now, because of the tumor pressure, this bone becomes more, more thin. More the tumor pressure behind, more the thick, thin bone it is. See this? Many times it is paper thin. I can thin out and remove this bone with my drill. I can use my chisel and hammer. I can use my punches, anything. See, the, I am using light. See this cracking the bone mm -hmm. with a chisel and hammer. It has become so thin. I can remove this bone like this. Yes. So now the next structure we come across is the pterygopalatine fossa periosteum. See this? The pterygopalatine fossa periosteum. I am coagulating the periosteum just to maintain the field. See this? I hope the picture is clear. Yes. Now I can use safely the punch. See this? Expose more and more. You have this tumor far behind and lateral and up. Everywhere. Behind the periosteum would be the tumor and on the surface of the tumor would be the vessels. See more and more exposure. I am removing more and more bunch. See how the tumor is bulging. I am removing this entire intervening bone. All bone being see all intervening bone between this part of the tumor and this part of the tumor. Right. 
Ronaldo. See all intervening bone coblation. Now a little bit of the puncture of the calcium. See the fat coming from the you see? Yes. 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 Further coblating on the surface to optimize my field. See this field. This is the, this is the turbinate. See this? I am taking off part of the lower part of the turbinate in between to show you both parts of the tumor in continuity. See both parts of the tumor. See this? That's the bottleneck. Can you see the bottleneck? See the bottleneck. That's the part of the turbinate. See my nasolacrimal duct up in the field. Can you see? But not bothering us. Not bothering us. We have cut it sharp above. Now see this part of the tube. All intervening bone has been removed. See this? Now my next course. My next course is to, you know, Catch the vessel before going further anywhere. Yes, leave it. Now see, we have to go behind this periosteum to catch the vessel. Okay? One of the most important part of the surgery. This is level of the floor. We know where the vessel is likely to be. So what I am doing here. See, I am cutting the, the periosteum to open up this space. Can you see the tumor? See, I have opened the periosteum. And see, this is tumor, pure tumor. I am taking away the periosteum. This rest of the periosteum. See the tumor is bulging. This is a tumor. Now in this lake of tumors, you have to identify the vessel. Big challenge.
big lake. I'm I'm trying to segregate and identifying the vessel. Can you see? Some fat which is prolapsing, which I am going to, uh, you know, remove and empty this field. This is the fat I am removing. Coagulation is the key. Now the goal is to look for the vessel. Can you see the vessel? This vessel has a tortuous course in the and fossa and the infratemporal fossa. It becomes tortuous coblator with the tumor coming in between. See this? First here, can you see this vessel which I am looping? See this? See the big vessel? And now here, I am putting a clip over it. See this? No, you have to write it off. No, give me one more. You have to write it off. Still, both are. What is that? Hmm. Suction, girl. This is one vessel to me that look at the main vessel supplying. So I will coagulate it. See this? Hello? Yes. Yes, sir. Very nice and easy. So far, there are many meanings. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I am looking for uh, the trunk now.
Can you see this? This is the main trunk. This is the main trunk. You pick it up. Door. Yes. And now I will put my clip. Clip is the most um, secure way of taking this vessel in control. See this? A coagulation can um, uh, reopen later on. So I will, um, on the safer side, use multiple clips. See the tumor pushes the vessel anteriorly. Do you ever have to ligate the internal maxillary artery again and come round flat to posteriorly? I have seen this one entering the tumor from within, not entirely many a times, within the lobulations of the tumor and that is very difficult to dissect it off. Mm -hmm. So your CT angiogram can actually tell you what exactly the course of the vessel. That's why CT angiogram is I am useful. See this vessel now? Yes. Clipped on the either side. Clipped on the either side. And I am transiting it. See this? Yes. Giving the major, you know, devascularization of this tumor. Though this is not devascularization to the level of the capillaries. Call it intraoperative embolization without actually doing embolization. Cutting shall give on. See now, once you are devascularized, by mistake I uh, you know press on the cutting. So just went into the tumor, so it started. So what you can do? You can use your surgery cell and leave it for a while, no issues. Devascularize, this is one component you have exposed. See the lateral part of the exposure? We have done anterior exposure, we have done anterior lateral exposure. Can you see very clear? Yes. And now we will go all around. We will do superior exposure and separate from the paranasal sinuses, we'll do medial exposure, go across the posterior part of the septum to go to the nasopharyngeal roof. See this tumor going in the different lobulations? Yes. And see this is the turbinate which is uh, uh, which was bothering earlier. See just see this. I am cutting I a little more. Summarize my case maybe for the sake of those who are joining later. I think Professor D. J. from Jaipur uh, in India is uh, demonstrating the surgical procedures today. We have a uh, final day, third day of uh, online surgical procedures. So we have uh, very interesting cases like that. So this case is particularly very extensive journey in a 12 year old. Uh, it has not been stabilized. We got to the imaging study to the uh, CT and the MR to look at the all three players. So See what I am doing. Sir, can I interrupt you? Wash. 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 Wash.
साइलेंट कर दे यार सी नाउ बस आई एम डूइंग इट थर्ड एक्ट मी नाउ आई एम सुपीरियर टू द ट्यूमर सी द ट्यूमर इज बिलो दिस इज वन कंपोनेंट विच इज एक्सटेंडिंग आप गिव मी अ वॉच पीस स्मॉल वॉच पीस टू पुश इट डाउन सी दिस कंपोनेंट दिस लॉब्यूल ऑफ द ट्यूमर and what i have done is anterior ethmoidectomy keeping my lamina papyracea as my lateral limit to show you something i told you this tumor can rise high in the ethmoidal roof or even you know erode the ethmoidal skull base but it doesn't involve the mucosa and see this is the ethmoidal cavity and keeping my lamina papyracea as a lateral limit this is lamina papyracea see this i doing my ethmoidectomy and going behind see there is no tumor in the ethmoids can you see yes see superiorly the ethmoidal cavity is crystal clear now this is your superior turbinate i am removing part of the superior turbinate with my shaver only Now look at the ethmoidal cavity. Very clear. Yes. Staying on the top of the tumor. See this. I am removing this ethmoidal floor. See this. See all the way tumor. I am giving superior exposure of this tumor. This is superior exposure. Suction the point, all right. Bus. This is superior exposure. All it might act me everywhere. The brider. Funny. See now, this is possible. Can you see? Yes. This is O N O D cell. See the uh, optic now. That is O N O D. Can you see this? Beyond O N O D, right? That is O N O D. That is optic now. Now my sphenoid is pushed medially and inferiorly. See there. Now this is the part of the superior turbinate which I am. Removing. To enter into the sphenoid sinus. Let me remove this part of the uh, tumor. Come later. So this tumor, which is coming in the instrumentation and bleeding again and again. See this? The small of the tumor. Superior medially, this one. Now my sphenoid is here behind. See this. Okay, pick. See the tumor within the sphenoid sinus. Can you see? Yes. Let me make it clearer for you. The part of the superior turbinate. and this is the septation between the sphenoid and the postethmoid the bladder and winding the sphenoid sinus and i told you this tumor never ever involved this paranasal sinus mucosa anywhere
See, this is the female sphenoid cyanide. This See the sphenoid mucosa. See the sphenoid mucosa behind. And this is the tumor within the sphenoid sinus. Let me widen the sphenoid more to show you better. See, this is sphenoid sinus. Oh, the carison. Coblation. First coblation. Let me apply some coblation on the surface where it is bleeding. Surface bleeding. Pardon? Yes, yes, yes. So it doesn't invade the mucosa. I told you again and again, they never involve the mucosa. Hata. See, whatever tumor which is coming in my exposure, I am coagulating, coagulating, coagulating. See more and more exposure? See tumor surface. Always use coagulation on the surface to minimize the bleeding during tumor handling. See this? Now this entry wall of the mucosa I am widening. Entry wall of the skeleton. See this anterior wall, I am going to widen to get the full view of the tumor of the sphenoid sinus. See this? See, I am widening the anterior wall. Widening the anterior wall. See how the tumor is freely occupying the sphenoid sinus. See this? It has gone from here. Can you see the defect in the floor? This tumor has gone here and I am widening this defect so that again we can pull it down. Okay? Yes. See that's the defect in the floor. That's the defect in the floor which I am removing. Uh, widening this this defect so this tumor again can be pushed back in the sphenoid uh, in the nasopharynx see this i am widening the floor see this tumor i can again push back in the nasopharynx now can you see very clear see this tumor i can push it back down See the sphenoid sinus inside. Very clear? It has gone up from here. I will similarly uh, push it down. So I have widened the axis. And uh, see this is all periosteum attachment which I am taking care of. See tumors periosteal attachments. See, these are the periosteal attachments of the tumor. See how this tumor has gone in the sphenoid sinus. And sphenoid mucosa is never involved. That's the best part. Similarly, we will pull it back. Okay? See this tumor which has risen up in the sphenoid sinus. This is the tumor component. See, this tumor component is bothering us again and again. What I will do now, I will cut it off without any problem. To give additional exposure. See, I am cutting with a coblator. It is like Cutting the butter. It is like cutting the butter. See, I am cutting the tumor. 
get without any issues. See this? See now the tumor in the sphenoid sinus and the sphenoid sinus mucosa is uninvolved. Can you see all around? This tumor is bulging from below. From here I widen the axis from below and similarly I will push it down. I hope it is very clear. So this is the superior exposure of the tumor now see in the paranasal sinuses. Now what um, Dr. Lewis was saying that attachment towards the midline. Can you see this tumor attached to the septum? This is very important, crucial, as Dr. Lewis mentioned, because it can affect on the opposite side as well. See this? I am coagulating the periosteal attachment. Coagulating the periosteal attachment under vision. See very clear? And then I will segregate completely segregate from this periosteum. That's it. No question of blood supply now coming to the tumor from any other side. See tumor completely segregated of the septum. Can you see very clear now? So this tumor is now bulging in the sphenoid and I have adequate access, you know, I have made to pull it down. See this? This, this, this access I will further widen by removing this uh, uh, chunk of bone over here. to widen the axis. See now? This chunk of bone I am removing to widen the axis. See now? This entire tumor can be pushed down straight without any problem. Can you see the tumor which has gone up in the sphenoid? The way it has gone up from below, we have widened the axis to pull it down. The brighter. The brider. This is to show that how this tumor can easily be pulled down into the sphenoid, uh, into the nasopharynx. See the sphenoid excess has been widened. See the sphenoid sinus mucosa. This this bone in the floor needs to be removed further, the tumor can be pushed down easily. See this? Mm -hmm. Now see there is no obstruction for this tumor to come down. See this tumor is, I can pull it, it is dying to be out like this. See this? So I am not doing that right now. See now the superior, this medial exposure towards the septum. Right. Okay? So I will just uh, leave a gauge piece to keep my field good at this point of time over here. Shoulder. I hope this. Yeah. So internal carotid artery runs through the post. Pardon? This tumor doesn't invade the mucosa. Artery is beyond that. Not only mucosa, but there is a bone also behind. This artery never goes, uh, this tumor never, never goes directly to involve the carotid artery from the sphenoid side. It goes to the cavernous sinus and carotid from the orbital fissure side. I will show you that extension and remove it under vision. See now the exposure. The lateral, the superior and the medial exposure. Can you see very clear? Yes, very clear. 90% of the time will be invested in exposure, exposure and exposure. Now I will expose posterior medially because this tumor is occupying the nasopharynx. 
going to the opposite side and taking a very important attachment to the nasopharyngeal roof which can invite the blood supply from the opposite side see this from of the tumor anterior surface of the tumor here i will do are ruk ja a posterior septotomy here see this only this posterior or posterior most septotomy to go to the opposite side see this this is posterior septotomy or septectomy whatever to go to the nasopharynx of the opposite side see to see the tumor extension to the opposite side and segregal roof attachment which is a important source of bleeding very very important source of bleeding and after that my tumor removal will start carefully remove the entire bone i told you between the various components of the tumor no intervening bone should be left mm -hmm. so you yeah see this tumor doesn't invade the mucosa as such except at certain levels i mentioned where it in like septum turbinate see this the opposite side inferior turbinate can you see very clear can you see see i have gone to the nasopharynx on the opposite side see this the opposite juice taken tube can you see at this point of time let me uh, use my question on the edge of the septum where it bleeds a little bit a uh, contact with the inferior turbinate where it can bleed at all this see the nasal flow and here towards the roof see this this can bleed surface now this attachment to the nasopharyngeal roof this tumor never takes attachment on the adenoid surface never it takes attachment on the periosteum of the nasopharyngeal roof see this and here i am truly segregating i am using now cutting to cut the periosteum to segregate the periosteal vessels from the opposite side can you see this completely segregated till depth so no opposite side bleeder can contribute now this tumor to this tumor can you see very clear very clear see this opposite side has been segregated very should be no doubt about it let me remove this gauze piece to show you better see the opposite niche ka section see the opposite side is segregated very clearly yes the brider there should be no doubts at any step yeah that is the sphenoid face and this is the keel below can you see this yes yes 
and see below that the all entire periosteal attachment has been sacrificed no attachment should be left to acquire the blood supply from the opposite side see i am everything coagulating this is very very important to ensure that no bleeding should come from the opposite side vessels see this this is midline now everything done now this is the time to plan your tumor removal see this you are exposed from all around i told you my majority of the time is going to go in exposure and i told you in tumor removal my strategy of plan division i told you in the beginning i told you will divide the tumor at the level of the lateral nasal wall in the planned way if you remember remember yes ek section niche rakh chhota gosh on Is it good way to work well with that? Is well used? See how the trigeminal shunoma. Shunoma. Yeah, the approach is same. Same. Approach is same, but that is not that vascular. Well. Now see, this is the bottleneck. एक एक सच्चा नीचे रखे ऊपर दो रख. See, this is the bottleneck. Can you see? Where I earlier entered into the tumor accidentally. Coagulate. Later. See the bottom leg of the tumor in the medial. This is lateral component. This is medial component, and medial component includes the nerve of the sphenoid. Can you see very clear? Yes. दूसरी ले लो बंद है यार सी नाउ व्हाट आई एम डूइंग किधर है भाई पुलो सी आई एम डूइंग व्हाट आई एम डूइंग आई एम कैटिंग दिस पैडिकल विद द भाई पुलर कैन यू सी सो बिफोर डिवाइडिंग आई एम एडिशनली एंश्योरिंग and i will immediately divide with a coagulator then i add the see this for the coagulating this tumor surface so that i can divide with the coagulator can you see very clear between the medial and the tumor this is planned to jaldi kar yaar ye paanch kar ye no 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 pull up okay now see yes See my coagulator. The key is done. This is again coagulation, coagulation, coagulation. Okay, nice. Okay, do it. 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 i am dividing at the level just bang on the bone why the do deep like such a like
I am going bang on the bone. See this? Sachin, can you see the bone? Yes, see. See, I am going bang on the bone. Yes, that's the pterygoid process. See the medial part of the tumor. Can you see? That's the medial part of the tumor. That's the lateral part. Completely segregated. Some oozing here will continue. This is the pterygoid component. See this pterygoid bone component. See this pterygoid bone component. This this tumor is within the bone of the pterygoid. This tumor is within the bone. I just so what I will do, what I'll do, I'll just place a surgical cell on the surface and press with the gauze, nothing. Yeah, so this vasculitis is from the pterygoid bone. See, I tell you there are three sources of vasculitis. See now, one is from the external carotid system which is principally the internal maxillary which you either or take under control like we did because principally it is from internal maxillary and we took intraoperative control number one second source of bleeding when tumor grows further to the skull base is from internal maxillary artery internal carotid artery which you cannot means you like it you cannot do anything to face it like here from the pterygoid venous plexus see which have we have pressed this again cannot be embolized that you have to face it and have to control it later on see why i have pressed with the watch piece can you see yes. now my medial tumor and the lateral tumor are two different components see this so now i will remove the medial tumor it is three parts the part which is rising above in the sphenoid. See this? I will pull it down now. See this? It is coming like a baby. See it has come out of the sphenoid because it doesn't take attachment. And we have to see how much the sphenoid was widened. See now? This is on the anterior face of the sphenoid. It is out of the sphenoid so easily. And now, here, it has some periosteal attachment to the sphenoid. See? See this? Which I am going to separate, which I am going to do with coblator. destroyed in the I will show you see now how the tumor has been fallen down see this the tumor has been brought down and it has a small attachment here in the roof see this see this and I can I can remove this the medial component is out without any issue see this suction then I got can you see the medial component of the tumor? Yes. And what is give what it has given us? It has given us the space to accommodate the lateral component now. Got my point? Yes. yes. That's why this was a strategy to divide it. Back. Now, for the mucosal ooze, I'll pack for a minute or two. And then 
will start removing the lateral component to various areas various difficult looking areas and believe me it is a cake walk now with this kind of exposure and space in the nasal cavity and nasopharynx it will come out like a cake walk in next 10 minutes we'll be through see now the medial part of the tumor has been removed things are under control see the visualization and i hope you are all oriented yes. yeah. that's the beauty of the dankers approach that's the beauty of this approach that it gives opportunity to visualize head on everything approach head on any everything bankar see this so this is ek aur dena this is for couple of minutes to make the feel good and now we'll embark on the lateral component we have seen we have a huge component in the uh, in the infratemporal fossa superiorly inferiorly anteriorly posteriorly everywhere and from there only it is going in the inferior orbital fissure superior orbital fissure and then in the cavernous sinus which we have to pull it in our next uh, couple of minutes that's it so our major part of you know surgery has been done which is done with the exposure see the medial component removal it didn't take more than 5 minutes how is the field how do you see the field now just give a minute or two i will improve the field and then we will go with the tumor removal of the lateral part the biggest tumor is in the lateral component and you will find this is easiest to remove as compared to the you know what it was looking like any questions mean time more and more hypoxic now we go ahead with the tumor removal from the lateral part and the strategy i told you it has gone everywhere we have to pull it out so it's a sort of traction and counter traction which is going to be the strategy now see we catch the part of the tumor and then we look next like and then we'll keep advancing our instruments yes see this catching the part of the tumor can you see this doesn't invade the muscle it prolapses goes beyond it doesn't invade see the tumor surface pakadiya see keep advancing your instrument see this this is v2 which i am separating see keep advancing your pull to get the tumor see this and see this is my traction and counter traction with the coblator ruk na ruk na guru ruk ja ruk 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 see just to show you see 
the traction and counter traction is the key yeah hold advance see this the hold is an advance and advanced and more and more deeper tumor being pulled off see this see how how big tumor it is see what how big this tumor is i told you the hand will find some bleeding from the middle meningeal behind see this but this is see this coming from behind see our vessels which we have clipped and see this bleeding this is mainly coming from behind give me a gauch piece see this bleeding because there was a vessel because there was a vessel coming from behind see very clear and some more vessel which i am coagulating here see the entire the infratemporal fossa is empty now of the tumor kasari This is the vessel which is coming from above. Mm -hmm. See this. See, there is a vessel which is coming from above. And we will tackle it later after the tumor removal. Meantime, we will just put a small piece of surgery cell over it and pack. See this? Can you see that beyond the tumor it is? Hello? This is beyond the tumor. The entire tumor has been pulled medially. say this we'll just pack it this vessel i told you on the scan we have to face it and we'll control in no time without any issues say this later on we'll uh, most likely clip it clip it or coagulate it not now right now our goal is to remove the tumor fast see this all lateral tumor has come in the medial part see this see this see are yaar see this all tumor everywhere suction like a coagulator there see everywhere okay okay now see this this tumor is going in the middle fissure can you see this this is the last component which is going toward the cavernous sinus here see this and i will gently 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 pull it off and you will see the gush of venous bleeding after that that will be healthy bleeding you put it niche kar now see now how gently you have to pull it off see this component close up can you see look at my pull yeah this look at my pull look at my pull keep advancing gentle pull gentle pull it will not break this is from the superior orbital fissure and this last component is coming from the cavernous sinus see this pakadna yes see this last component coming out 
this last component coming out of Kevana sinus. This one. They are chutra. Chutra. What's up to do? See this last component which is coming out of the I'll remove this part of the bone. See this component? Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. See this last component which is coming out. This is true cavernous sinus component. And see the sinus bleeding afterwards. See it has come out one piece from the cavernous sinus and see this cavernous sinus from inside. See the venous bleeding. Uh, heart section. See the venous bleed. Can you see? Yes. This is healthy bleed. I am not keen to pack it tightly here. See the entire tumor is out within the nasal cavity. And now I will push it since it is too big, no. no. Since it is too big, it, this should be pushed through the oropharynx. And there is a pack. First, let's move the pack from behind. This pack. So that we can push our tumor behind now. See this? Huge tumor. Huge tumor going down. See this. Uh, yeah. See the V2 there up. Separated. I am not packing the cavernous bleeding so far. All packs removed. Wash. Just let me show you. All packs removed. I want this little bit of venous bleeding to come to ensure that no tumor is left behind. See the cavernous sinus from inside. Can you see the cavernous sinus? This is cavernous sinus, this is sphenoid sinus and see the pulsations of the carotid artery. See the carotid pulsations. Can you? So now I will leave a small surgery cell. Give me a small surgery cell. See entire tumor out. Lateral component, see V2 which is running all the way in the roof. Can you see this? This is the cavernous component and I will place uh, some surgery cell into it without pressure. Without pressure. See, I am not using any pressure at all. There are lots of nerve running through the cavernous sinus and you are not supposed to pack tightly. Okay? I am just leaving the surgery cell and putting a pack over it so it doesn't come out. See this? With no pressure at all. Show this. Show this. See this. Let some blood come out. Doesn't matter. It will stop automatically. See this? And now this tumor which is released. See it is completely released. I was See the tumor which is completely released. See the tumor completely free? Hello? Yes, yes. 
The nasal cavity, sphenoid sinus, suction in the sphenoid. This sphenoid sinus, the pack towards the cavernous sinus and pack towards the infratemporal fossa. All clear? We will push, we will push this, um, you know, tumor, push this tumor in the oral cavity and remove from there, Lano. See this? See this? This has been pushed. A pack in the nose meantime for a while, a gentle pack. Keep the feel good. See the nasal pack? No bleeding otherwise. We have pushed the tumor down and then we'll remove the tumor per oral. So lateral component didn't take more than 10 minutes, I told you. Look now. Suction gun. See, this is the tumor which is coming out of the oral cavity. Can you see? Various components of the tumor, various components, this was the cavernous component, this was the infratemporal fossa, see this all component, all components of the tumor and this was earlier the medial part of the tumor, this tumor was like that. So we divided it here at the medial part, see this, this was separated earlier, this was going up in the cavernous. This was going in the infratemporal fossa, the entire tumor. Can you see very clear? Yes. Now, let's check the pterygoids, let's check everything, let's check the vessel. See now everything under control? So it is, it is the axis which matters. It is the axis which matters. This is the part where we the cell, can you see? Yeah. This is pterygoid venous oozing outside which starts with the packing. You don't need to really do anything much. Forceps or clip. Now this was the vessel which was coming from behind and showed you an MRI as well, which was supposed to avoid from tumor removal. See, see these are our vessels which we clipped earlier. Can you see? Yeah. And see we packed and everything under control. Give me, give me a coblator. So I want to coblate that vessel area. See, this is all infratemporal fossa. See how the infratemporal fossa bleeding control with the coagulation. Now this is median canal which I am going to drill off later. See this one. This is median canal. This is V2 going up in the foramen rotundum. Hello. Yes. This is V2 going in the foramen rotundum. See above. This is the eye. This is the serpentine course of the V2 in the roof. See this? This is cavernous sinus. This is here going to be the foramen rotundum region. This is all pterygoid process which was having the tumor. See this tumor was here. Which ultimately we have to ensure a microscopic clearance. Now, give me some surgical. For the, for the infratemporal fossa now. 
See, entire infra temporal force are very clear. Now I will pack because this muscle surface can ooze. So surgery cell one more. Very good. See this? Just leave. Now, this bone is the notorious bone, which is often invaded by the tumor. Very good. This is the region of the median canal. Can you see the median now? See, see how it is destroyed. Can you see? This bone is a cancellous bone and often invaded by the tumor. First, um, let me go there. See, nerve. Transjected whatever soft tissue there and we have to ensure this entire cancerous bone is tumor free. So I will use my special drill for that. Again high speed diamond drill. can all be suction wash karke suction karo see how the normal bone bringing out can you see? All this cancellous bone has to be flushed. See this entire pterygoid process all around the V2 and median. This is so called recurrence.
Ça va bien. Ça tient là. Wash. Give me a wash. Just wash. Darwin. Oh, wash at number one. Wash, 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 top wash. One for I guess. One for I guess. Give me a wash. Hello? This is fine tuning now to ensure that no abnormal bone is left behind. That's finished. Yes. That's finishing. See? The edges of the cavernous sinus opening. See the way to? Now see each and every area close up. See now this is cavernous sinus region with surgery cell. मारिए तुम्हारे बोले, दो साले, बोले, पतला ले यार, या, अगेन सी द क्लोज अप, नाउ सी द टेरिगोइड बोन, कैन यू सी, द कैंसिलस बोन This is V2 where the foramen rotundum is, where this infraorbital nerve is going in. Can you see this very clear? Yes. See the pterygoid below. <coughs> pterygoid has been drilled off and flushed. See this is thin bone is left behind. Either, either. See the pterygoid. This is median canal where the median nerve was sacrificed, cut and flushed everywhere. There is no tumor. Can you see now? Yes, yes. This, this is the advantage of endoscopy. This is the advantage of endoscopy. You can look into fine crevices, canal, foramens. This is the biggest advantage of endoscopy, which is called for open surgery. It is not that the scar which matters. So entire cancellous bone has to be thoroughly cleaned off. Now I can say that no tumor. See this. See, look at the pterygoid. No tumor has been left behind. Can you see? That's the pterygoid. That's the pterygoid. That's the Palatovaginal canal containing the pharyngeal nerve. See that? Look into it. This is V2 and this is the cavernous sinus, this is sphenoid sinus. So all this area, this is infratemporal fossa, see your internal maxillary clip there. And this is the V2. See this? This is infratemporal fossa. This is your nasopharynx. See your See your see both the eustachian tube orifices. This is adenoid surface. This never takes attachment on the adenoid surface. See this? Can you see? Very clear? Yes, yes, yes. So 
just so now we will finally close with some surgery cell, some nasal pack for a day or two. So that's all about the pack. <coughs> that's all about the endoscopic, uh, you know, excision of uh, juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma with the all named extensions. Any questions, any suggestions so far? Sir, 